All right, it's recording now. So, all right. So, welcome. It's week three. And this week is actually really important because epidemiological statistics are the basis for other, um, I would say, advanced statistics. Like, for example, if you, if you are going to use chi-square statistics, the principles behind um, two by two table is exactly the same principle that the um, chi-square statistics is going to use. It's basically what's the observed frequency versus the expected frequencies. And so that's pretty much what's happening in epidemiology. You know, it's like who gets the disease and who did not get the disease. So the wording may change, but the concept is very the same. So when you look at chi-square statistics, the null hypothesis for uh, chi-square statistics says that there are no differences in the expected and the observed frequencies. Where when you look at epidemiological statistics, you will also look at odds ratio and or relative risk. So if there's really no difference, if there's really no difference in the odds ratio of those who are exposed and those who have been exposed, then pretty much then there's no differences in the, um, in the incidence or occurrence of the disease. So there's, it's so important to understand that statistic, epidemiological statistics are so relevant to chi-square statistics. And later on, on the second part of our statistics, it's also very relevant to logistic regressions. Now, there's two types of regressions. It's like multiple linear regressions, and you also have logistic regressions. For biostats it, or epidemiological statistics, it's logistic, regist, uh, logistic reg regression that's very meaningful because you're gonna use logic. So let's start. So epidemiological statistics is actually within the realm of biostatistics because biological statistics and epi deals with diseases. So because diseases are biological, so epidemiological statistics are within the realm of biostatistics and specifically epidemiology measures and look at the disease occurrence risk frequency incidence prevalence and we will all cover that today all right let's see trying to move my cursor all right so maybe i went a little bit ahead Okay, now I just, so let's begin with proportion, ratios, and rates. In EPI, it is common to deal with data that indicate whether an individual was exposed to an illness, has an illness, experience injury, get disabled, or died actually. So ratios, proportions, and rates are commonly used measures for summarizing data that pertains to epidemiological studies. It's very easy to remember the first three words. Proportions are basically defined as just a fraction of a total group. Group. I mean, you know, we use this in our common language day to day. What is the proportion of, of nurses to doctors? So, you know, in the clinical unit. So, for example, you only have two doctors and you have 10 nurses in one clinical unit. Then you know that... Um, the proportion of nurses is a fraction of the total group, so 10 out of the 12, that is your proportion. Or if you're talking about what is the proportion of the doctor to the nurses, well, there are only two, two doctors out of the 12 of the nurse and the doctor in the unit, then that is definitely lower proportion for physician and greater proportion for nurses. So when you put that into the disease, it's a lot easier to look at proportion when it comes to who gets the disease and who did not get the disease. In proportion, the numerator is always part of the denominator. 
it is commonly expressed as a percentage because it's a lot easier to understand. So if, for example, with what I have said, that two out of, I mean, 10 out of 12, so you, you divide 10, 10 are nurses out of the 12 staff member in the unit where two were physicians, 10 out of 12, you have basically, you just simply divide 10 divided by 12 and you multiply it by 100 and you get it as a percentage. And that's the proportion of nurses in the unit. So here's an example here. 100 students smoked cigarettes and there were 300 total students. So that's very easy. What's the proportion of smokers? Well, you just simply divide 100 divided by 300 or 0.33 and then you multiply it by one by 100 to get your percentage and that is 33 percent so calculating a proportion is very simple you always have to look at the numerator and then the denominator is the total number of men for 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 this example you have 189 diabetic men and then the denominator is the total number of men. So it's 3,340. So you just simply divide 189 out of the 3,340. Yeah. What, is, what is the proportion? Calculate the point proportion. 0 0.056. Point or 5.66%. Percent. Percent. Because you have to multiply it by, yeah, because you have to multiply it by 100. So it's only about 5.66% were men in the study who were diabetic because you're again there is the uh, the denominator is 3340. Another example for when you calculate the proportions of deaths among men and because the denominator has to include all deaths so in this example it's just a little bit of nuance but you can see that there were 911 deaths in men 72 deaths in diabetic women and 511 deaths in non-diabetic women. And then the total of deaths is 1,494. So when you look at proportion, you actually include all the deaths because the question is calculate the proportion of deaths among men. Now in proportions, you have to include the entire population. And so that's why your total of deaths is 1,494. So for men, there were 100 deaths in diabetic men and 811 deaths in non-diabetic men. You have a total of 911 deaths in men. And the question is calculate the proportion of deaths among men. It didn't say calculate the deaths among men with diabetic or with non-diabetic. It just says calculate the proportion of deaths among men. So you have to add all the deaths in men and then the denominator will be all deaths. So that includes death in men, deaths in diabetic mm -hmm. women, deaths in non-diabetic women. And that gives you a total of 1,494. So you just simply divide again, 911 divided by 1,494, and that is the proportion of deaths among men. 60%. 60%. Roughly how much? 60%. Okay. 60.98%. All right. Very good. So knowing those things, it's a lot easier to remember also that when we understand proportions, it's time to move on in understanding ratios. So ratio in contrast to proportion, again, this is one number divided by another as in proportion, but there's a big difference when you look at the ratio. When you calculate ratio, the numerator does not have to be part of the denominator anymore. So that is a big, big difference between the two proportions versus ratios. A good example here that's in this slide is that 100 students smoke, 200 do not. So the ratio of smoker to non-smoker is 100 is to 200. So we do not include the numerator anymore to the denominator. Because remember, back in proportion, we always include the numerator to the denominator, right? We include all the deaths in men and then, and the deaths of a women, and then we calculated just the death of the men. So 
the numerator were part of the denominator when we talk about proportions. But now that we're just talking about ratios, only we, the big difference now is that the numerator does not have to be part of the denominator anymore. So when we have an example of 100 students smoke, 200 do not, the ratio of smokers to non-smoker, you just simply just do the 100 is to 200 or one is to two or 0.5, which we can simply say that for every student who smokes, two do not. Calculating a ratio. So ratio means there's two, two, two number because it has to be a ratio. You cannot have a ratio when there's only one point of reference. So a ratio, when we say an odds ratio, is the ratio of odds. So, because ratio means there's at least two numbers. So an, an example here is that from the cross-sectional study exploring breast cancer risk factors in Utah, 704 women indicate that they had one or more children and 132 said they had never had a child, with 12 not responding to the question. Now, the, 12, the number 12 here is just a distractor. It has nothing to do with calculating a ratio. When we calculate a ratio, we simply want to know which one has and which one doesn't, and then you create those two numbers and they become the, they become the ratio. So the question here is, what is the ratio of Paris to non-Paris women? So, well, 700 women indicate they have one or more children, so they are the Paris women. 132 said that they never had a child, they are the non-Paris women. So basically, to create a ratio, you have to just say 704 is to 132, and therefore, the answer for that question is right here, right there. 704 divided by 132 is 5.3. And that can be interpreted as there were 5.3 times more women who had a child then there were women who never had a child. So that's how we calculate the ratio. So it's simply just what is the number of the, of the pairs and what is the number of the nulli pairs. And then you divide it and that becomes the ratio and you interpret it as the number of women who have uh, the rate, the rate, the ratio is the answer is the the five point three is the ratio of Paris to non Paris women. Nice. All right, because again, ratio is just simply two numbers, and when we say odds ratio, it's just the ratio of odds. What about rates? Well, rates can be defined. A rate is defined as a measure of frequency with which an event occurs in a defined population over a period of time. This is probably the easiest to calculate, very useful in comparing disease frequency in different locations at different times or among different groups. For example, what is the heart rate or is, what is the heart rate which is the number of beats per minute among newly born? Then you know that they are about 120 per minute. What is the heart rate among middle-aged adults? Well, if you exercise and they're very fit, probably they're around 60, but pretty much the normal range of the heart rate is 60 to 80 in an adult. So when you compare heart rate with an adult, with a newly born, you can easily make that comparison because rates are basically the measure of frequency of an event that occurs in a defined population. So very easy to understand. I mean, heart rates have different rates in infants, in, in adults, and even in older adults. So rates is the easiest way to calculate, but it allows you to compare the measure 
at a different defined population over a specified period of time. Same thing with respiratory rate. Uh, respiratory rate for infants is very different than the respiratory rate of adults. And the respiratory rate of people who are about to die definitely also have a very different rate. You may have, well, let's see, if it's chain, stokes, respiration already, you may have only eight respiratory rate in one minute, which is giving you the hint that, boy, this patient is really about to die because it's just getting slower, deeper, and less frequent respiratory rate. So rates, very easy to, to get, and it allows you to compare different defined population over a specified period of time. Percentages, well, it means per 100. It's just a fraction, meaning something out of a 100. It may be of interest to calculate percentage change by dividing the difference between the two numbers by the starting number. So this is one thing that sometimes I struggle. It's like I just have to remember, I have to divide the difference between the two numbers by the starting number. So this starting number is always the key to, to get the correct percentage. For example, here, an increase from 50 to 75 would be, so remember the rule to get the percentages is to divide Different. the difference between the two numbers. numbers. So by the starting number. So our starting number is 50. So this is our denominator. And mm -hmm. the difference between the two is 25. So you cannot do the reverse. There's this, this is where a lot of error happens because uh, one would think that we would put 50 divided by 25, but no, the correct way of getting percentages is to divide the difference between the two numbers, so 50 and 75. What is the difference? 25. 25. By the starting number. So what is the starting number? 50. 50. And that's why it's 25 divided by 50 or a 50 percent so when there's an increase from 50 to 75 that is considered a 50 percent increase what about the second example a decrease from 75 to 50 what percentage change is that well follow the basic rule Get the difference between the two numbers, 75 and 50 is 25 is the difference, and divide by the starting number. And the starting number this time is 75. So it's now going to be 25 divided by 75, and your answer is 0.33% decrease. So it's very tempting to just look at, you know, like, matamata hon bitaw. But, sayo to ta ng matamata, ayo jud. Palo, memorize lang yun, memorize lang yun the rule nga, divide the difference between the two numbers and then, I mean, I mean, obtain the difference between the two numbers first and then divide by the starting number. Once, dili na ni mong kalimtan nga, nga, kanang rule, ah, dili jud ka masayo pa nagtubag sa exam. Memoryahon yun na siya. Dili pwede matamatahon kaya kung matamatahon, masayop mo cancer. Magtuo man tayo ng 50% o 100% ng increase niya. Dili dahil tumao. Okay, we didn't follow the rules. So, more percentage problems. 100 students were enrolled in an undergraduate course in 2009. The enrollment increased by 50 students for this course in 2010. What is the percentage increase? 50%. Very good. Because what's the rule? It subtracts and not to ang two numbers, right? 100, 100 minus 50 is 50, right? 50. And then it divides the first number, which, number? which is 100. 100. So 50 divided by 100. 20%. Correct? 50. Yes. 50. 
No, 50, 50 divided by 100 is 50, because 5 man. 5 divided by 1. Percent. 50%. 50% is the, per, is the percentage increase. So next one. 43 graduate students were enrolled in one section of 481 in fall of 2009. So this is just the name of the course, 481. Enrollment in this section decreased by 13 students in fall of 2010. So you subtract Renato, 43 minus 13, 30. Yeah, it divide Renato the first number, 43. So 30 divided by 43, pila man. 0.69 of 70. 0.70. Okay, so um, about 30% 30, 30 ang answer. Okay. 43 man minus 13. Is that up? 30. Yeah. Imo ba ya i divide dayon sa kuan sa first number? 30 divided by 43? It's 30. Okay. Okay. Ang ako kay consider na ako ang 481 so wala na yung labot ang 481 pangano na school so one section in of 481 ah oh. <laughs> wala na yung labot ang 481 kana pag kanang 481 mo na y mo na numbers sa bio statistics dery sa default okay ang ako ng ako naman times na 481 niya yeah. uh, there are new enrollees and those number of 43 enrollees were considered the total of 481 sa 2009 and then minus na ako 13 muna ako answer is 2.7% what ay labot ang 481 why labot ang 481 43 students ra i minus na to ang dual ka number 43 minus 13 ang answer 13 i divide na to sa primero nga number 43 ang correct answer is 30% all right 13 divided by 43 no mm 30 30 divided by 43 is roughly 30 percent. Hmm? 0.69 answer. 43 minus 13. Ang correct answer is 30. It divides the first number ng 43. Uh huh. 30 divided by 40. May atong ka na basing 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 sayo. Basing sayo pa sudang akong answer ki kay. Kanang naa sa inyo. Kanang naa sa inyo hang notes. Kanang naa sa inyo hang notes section. Na mo na siya answer. So let's see. Ila imo answer dok? 30. Oh. So okay. Kan naman to 30 divided by 43. 30. Yes, exacto. Divided by 43. Oops, hold on. 30 divided by 4, 3. 30% ang answer. Equals. Oh, actually, ang answer is 69.7%. So, so, diba, Doc, is 43 minus 13. 13. Oh. So, 30. Uh -huh. 30. Uh -huh. divide so, money mo by the first the 40, number. 40, 75%. Pagili kayo, kuha naman ko. No, 30 divided by 43. 43, oh. So, 69%. Ang correct answer is 69. So, ako na yung usbon ang answer key, Derisa, was nga butang 30%. Kasi, masayang ako mga TA magpataka o butang kuan, answer key. Kaya ang rule. Kaya ang rule. Ang tala ang TA? Teacher assistant at Okay, ang rule is very basic. Imuman it subtract ang two numbers. For 43 minus 13 is 30. Anya imuman git it divides sa first number. So 43 man ang first number. So ang correct answer git 69 percent. Just like what we did in the first question. 100 ka students. Anya pagkahuman so it subtract man ang 100 sa 50, correct? So, ang answer, 50. Ang nga, pagkaman ang 50, i-divide man nato sa first number ng 100. So, 50 divided by 100, ang correct answer is 50. So, correct ang answer diri sa answer key sa first question. Pero ang second nga question, sayo pang answer key. So, that's what learning is all about. Everybody has to catch up, especially sa math. Tagahan yung mga sayo, 
Nah, <laughs> mo na pabalik balik kon ginong mat gud. But anyway, now we have computers, so dili na ko ay dili na kayo ta mahadlok anang mga sayop sa atong calculation kay infinite na gud ang ability sa computer mo calculate sa atong mathematics. Makabugo ba ning computer sa high gud. Kay mura magsalig na lang jud kanya. Ang imo na lang yung timan-an gud is ang mga assumptions. Kinanglan gud mas sweeto jud ka sa mga assumptions ka different statistics kay All the math is already done by the computer software. Ikaw nga uh, statistician, kinalan kay balod yung kaon sa mga rules na lang yun. Kung sa assumption nga, kanisya nga statistics, dili pwede gamiton kung dili parametric. Kanisya nga statistics, dili pwede gamiton kung dili non-parametric. So, mga na itong mga, mga na itong i-focus karon sa ato ang statistics. As you notice, dili na kayo kung mag-emphasize yun o math nga exam. Okay, sa unang panahon, math magigit to. So, sa Cebu Doctors pa, my God. Nagaan ka ko sa kalibro, magsugod ang statistics na kuan sa masters niya. Pagkahuman, mahuman ka kay ipapilapon kita na, ipa, ipahan calculation ang tanang statistics niya. Kung mana ka, oh, masar na lang ka diritso. Kung banata. Karun, ang board, ang board exam karun kay makadana kag-calcul sa una sa amo, dili. Hmm. So, lahi na gita ka ron kay 21st century namang yun. Ang, ang, ang skill set sa mga PhD nga gikinahanglan is clear understanding yun sa mga assumptions at different statistics. Kay para dili ka mo violate anak ng mga assumptions. Kay kung once i-violate ni mo ang mga assumptions, ang imuhang, ang imong data ni mo is actually normally distributed na ito kay me, na kay media, na kay mode. So na kay measures of central tendency. So parametric, good. Kanya pagkauman mo, gamit kag man with ni you test. Kanya ka man with ni kay non-parametric man na siya. So sayop na po ang imuhang gigamit ng statistics. Ang imuhang tanggamit ng t-test, good. Kaya ang imong, ah, ang imong data na I mean, na I media, na I mode, yan, normally distributed ang, ang pagtanaw ni mo sa bell curve. So, mauna yung mga importante na ito nga mahinumduman, karun sa 21st century is, which of the statistics fit the data? Mauna yung na yun. Niya, unsay mga assumptions sa different statistics niya, ikaw man mga researcher, kinangan, ikaw kabalod yung gagod unsay quality sa imo ang quality o ang, o ang characteristics, ang features sa imuhang data, kinahalan kay Balogid ka. Muna yung kasagaran na ako ng mga consultations, ako mga doctor of nursing practice students, kay ang ilahang ini, kung man nilag research, panangitan, mag pre-test and post-test sila, kay ni-introduce sila o video education. Ang niya, pagkahuman, ang ilahang ko ang pre-test, naghatag sila 10 multiple choice questions, pre-the video presentation, and then uh, another post-test, same question, post-administration uh, of the video. So, the question now is, uh, are the data from pre- and post-test parametric? Are they normally distributed? Are they homogeneous or are they heterogeneous? And then you have to answer all of that question in order to choose the right statistics. Are you going to use parametric statistics or non-parametric statistics? Mm -hmm. Most of the time, students think that because it's a quiz, the score will be parametric. But actually, no, it's not. IQ is parametric. It's normally distributed. It has a very beautiful mean, median, and mode. But when it comes to test results, most of the test results are non-parametric because naju na maka score of two out of ten, na maka score of ten out of ten, na maka score in town nga narastunga. So dili ju na normally distributed ang exam, ang mga test results. So. Most of the time, ang appropriate statistics nga gamitin is man with ni you test kay non-parametric ang data nga gikulak sa students. Ang IQ, yes. Ato na siyang ma-takulok? Yung takulok nga ato. Analyze on lang yun ba? Kinang lang kung nag-kulak na ka o data, mas maayog yun nga makigistorya ka sa imong statistician. Mas maayog yun nga ikaw sa mga utanas at kasi mong kagalingon nga 
dili man gyud ni siya para metric okay, okay. wala man siya klaro nga mean median og mode niya pagkahuman dili man bell curve niya pagkahuman ang ang interquartile range bati man kay tan-awon dayo man kay diferensya so na ginay sa pagkuan pa lang una pa lang ta mo analyze sa data daghang kita pananawon mga whisk plots mga interquartile range niya pagkahuman tan-awon ni ila man ang mean ila man ang median ila man ang mode niya pagkahuman remember last week we talked about measures of central tendency mm. normally distributed na normally distributed para ang mean dako dako gamay og og uh, og value okay. kaysa median ya ang median di ako so magsunod gyud ang mean median og mode in a normally distributed pero rightly skewed na gani magdako ang median mugamay ang mean ya pagkahuman mugamay pod ang mode so motong importante kay itong mga key concepts nga unsa may mahitabo sa mean median og mode kung right skewed ang data or left skewed ang data ya pagkahuman i-determine din siya kung ni meet ba sa mga assumptions nga gi require sa specific na statistics so lots of consultation lots of thinking but the good news is that dili na ikaw may nag arithmetic you know wala wala lagi na nimo gi-include do sa previous slides ang kadtong manu manuet asa to wala next week pa tayo ni eh. ah okay inferential statistics na next week so ah okay gihinahinayan ra ganini nga nagsugod ra ganit tag pinakasayon discount statistics ya pag dili ba tag ako na wala mo na gingan gi kon ra gani kaning gi break in ra gani mo na para dili kayo mo dili kayo mo tingkag golden rates mo Kaya ako man nakita ng bell curve raman to, katong skewed to the left and to the right. Oh, mo ito mga sinugdanan ng mga concepts. Mo ito mga introductory good nga concepts. Kay, Sabi nga sa stat, no? Inigabot na. Yeah. Sige lang. Inigkuan, ang, kung na, actually, kung na kay libro nga katong monro, katawang ibot lang, kung pwede mo palit mo, Ana, sa... Pagoy, sa Amazon? Sa Amazon.com, mag-68 dollars man. So, I don't know, peso mag... Bugat bugat gid na naon sa Pilipino pero kung mga PhD mangutag good mo invest gid ta ani kay mo ko okay ra man ko ana pero diri sa Pilipinas do kay nakawata na mang good among card do ko sa online mo di na ko ganahan mag card pero ang amazon.com is reliable man so pagiton ta mo lang daan sa statistical man. ang ang kan wala sa copy ana do ang of magpakopya lang jud ko sa table of contents kay kaning table of contents sa sa Munro gi, gihan ay na na siya daan ang parametric syempre ang mga parametric ang independent t-test niya ang giparisan siya sa Man Whitney mana siya ay non parametric niya pagkaman pair t-test mana siya parametric ang equivalent sa match paired nga ko ang non parametric mana po na siya gitaw ba Wilcoxon match pairs line rank test so ang naganindot ani gid nga libro kay pagtan-aw pa lang daan ni mo sa table of contents ang naa sa wala parametric ang nasa tuo non parametric so dali ra kayo sab dun t test parametric whether it's independent t test or paired t test ang equivalent sa t test nga independent t test nga mahimo na siyang non parametric wilcoxon ang pagkahuman ang paired nga t test ang equivalent na ang um, I'm sorry man with ni ang independent t-test niya Wilcox Sundayan ang pair t-test. So all of that dali ra kay mahinom duman niya pagkahuman next week na nato i-cover kay magsugod naman tag inferential statistics next week. So inferential means pwede na ta mo predict gamay. So dili lang kay associations, dili lang kay descriptions or explanations ang atong mabuhat, but we start going through a, a little bit higher higher level of of um, sort of mathematical prediction based on inferential statistics. All right. So, next one here.
So analysis of two by two tables is really a measure of risk. So this is what I've mentioned earlier. When, you, when we do two by two tables, when, when we get to the inferential statistics, think of chi-square statistics. And chi-square categorical and variable so it's either yes or no. Categorical means nominal, going back again to the different review that we did. Nga ang type of data is nominal or what we call categorical. You know, we put number one, we, we assign a name. Number two, we assign a name. So manang gitawag siya nominal or categorical. Nipagkahuma na adayo ang next nga set sa ang level sa itong data ay adayo original. How much ordinal na interval? Pag how much interval ratio? Here, sa odds ratio and relative risk, these are what we call categorical data. Because remember, we assign disease and no disease, exposed and non-exposed. So, di ba? It's the perfect scenario for categorical or what we call nominal data. And what is the statistics that can deal with categorical or nominal data? Chi square statistics. So, manang ayodyo ni kalimti nga ang odds ratio o ang relative risk closely related good news siya sa chi square statistics. Ang, ang null hypothesis sa chi square statistics is there is no difference in the observed versus the there's no difference between the observed and the expected frequencies so one on disease no disease exposed non-exposed so much good just a null hypothesis the chi-square statistics which is there is no difference between the expected frequencies and and the one that really occurred. All right. So, odds ratio and relative risk, both of this mathematical calculation compare the likelihood of an event between two groups. There's one subtle difference between the two, which I will emphasize over and over again. Commonly used measures of relative probability